Uh, so this is command line fluency how, or how to avoid repetitive stress injury. Um, I read somewhere that uh, for uh, uh, repetitive stress injury for geeks is like black lung for coal miners. It's an occupational hazard. We want to avoid it. Uh, alternate title, how to use the bash command line with a minimum of keystrokes and a maximum of speed. You can download this presentation at scof.org slash CLFP for command line fluency presentation. Uh, so, command line. Uh, I kind of want to find out where everybody is. So, uh, raise your hand. You're a super ninja and you're here to teach me stuff. Okay. You feel sort of comfortable on the command line. Okay. Uh, you don't know what the command line is. All right. You raised your hand for all of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I am John Mark Schofield. Uh, shameless plug, I work at Citrus Bites. It's a great place to work and we're, working, we're looking for good people and uh, we work remotely, which is, I'm learning, is awesome. Uh, my website is scof.org. I'm JMS at scof.org. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm friendly, I don't bite. And on Twitter, I'm scof. Let's do this. Okay, everybody starts out the same when they learn the command line. It's just, you know, you're having fun, you're typing, you're going crazy, you know, you type a command, maybe you make an error, so you type the same command again correctly. You know, it's fun, everybody's having a good time. And then it gets to the point where you're typing so much because you don't know any better. It's just how, you, how you've always done it. Uh, you know, you're just like, you know, boop, bloop, 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 bloop. Not so fast, kitty. See, I, they're bad jokes, but I'm, I'm, I'm working hard to, to keep you guys with me. We want to do more with less. We want to, uh, uh, we want to be efficient. Uh, you know, this is not, the goal is not to uh, write Tolstoy. The goal is to write uh, Hemingway. You know, you want to be succinct. Okay, so you want to get these shortcuts in your muscle memory. There's a, a decent number of... Uh, shortcuts and tricks that I'm going to show you tonight. Don't try to uh, uh, use all of them tomorrow. Pick one uh, and use that. Get it in your muscle memory. Stick it on a post-it on your monitor and use it every day. And when you don't need the post-it anymore and you're still using it, then try another one. Okay, build habits. That, that's the important thing. These are, if these are just curiosities, uh, little bits of trivia that you know, they do you no good whatsoever. Uh, and again, don't start doing all of these at once. Uh, you know, just one at a time until you feel, uh, you feel comfortable with it. So these, what I'm going to show you works in Bash, in Linux, or OS X. If you use a different shell, some of these may work. Okay, so the biggies, we're going to get the low-hanging fruit first. And uh, so some of the early ones, the big ones, you may already know, and we'll get to some that you probably don't know towards the end. And I'd say if you're going to pick which one to work into your muscle memory, start with the first one I talk about that you don't know. Because uh, I've tried to, to arrange them in, uh, in that order. Up arrow. Who knows what up arrow does? What? Who, who said that? All right. Okay. Up arrow is your friend, okay? Seriously, up arrow is your friend. It repeats the previous command. Uh, you can hit it as many times as you want to cycle back through the, the, the previous commands that you've entered. You can hit down arrow to go back down if you go too far. So this is, if, if you don't, most people know this. This is not, you know, but, but if you don't know this, this should be like, ha ha! Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 so one more thing, edit a command and then hit enter to run it. What I'll see people do a lot is, you know, arrow key over to the middle of the command, change something, and then arrow key over to the end of the command and hit enter. And I just want to slap those people in the back of the head. And due to OSHA regulations and a restraining order, I don't, but I want to. Uh, just hit enter, the computer will figure it out. Tab. What does tab do? Thank you. That was almost slick. Um, on, okay, tab, autocomplete. Tab is your other friend, seriously. 
Uh, you use tab to autocomplete paths, file names, or anything else Bash can figure out how to autocomplete. And it's not just paths and file names because lots of programs will add Bash autocomplete modules when they're installed. So for instance, uh, virtual env wrapper, which is a Python tool, sorry, please don't hit me, um, uh, it will add its environments to the Bash autocomplete. So you can just type the first letter of it and autocomplete one of those in one of those environments. And there's lots of other things that work that way. So use tab even when you don't think it'll work, because sometimes it will and sometimes it won't, and the times that it does are awesome. Hit tab twice to see all the possibilities if more than one matches what you've typed. So say you're in your home folder and you're on a Mac. Uh, you type CD sp space capital D and hit tab. Nothing happens because there's no unique match. Okay, you type O, so you've got CD space DO, you hit tab, uh, nothing happens. You hit tab twice, it shows you documents and downloads. And then you type uh, C and tab auto completes documents. So everybody, uh, uh, by the way, feel free to raise hands. Um, uh, I'm go gonna go very fast because I've had a uh, almost lethal dose of caffeine today, but uh, Seriously, raise hands. If you have questions and you leave here confused, this isn't doing anybody any good. Okay, so seriously tab and up arrow. I, ser I really do stand behind people yelling, up arrow, up arrow, tab. I, I hired Peter and then quit. But uh, uh, Peter can attest that I actually do stand behind people going, tab, tab, when I see them doing that. Control R. Who knows what Control R does? Who, who said that? Who was first? Who was, what? You can search for commands. If you control R, then you start typing what you want and, and then see if it pops up. You get the most complete answer, you get the Skittles. Searches through your history. Sorry about the throw. Uh, searches through your history. Command, control R is awesome. Very powerful. Uh, so you hit Control R and then you start typing it'll display the most recent match. You can type more to refine the match or hit control R again to go to the next one back and the next one and the next one that matches. Uh, and control R again to display the next match. I um, uh, read about control uh, R in a great book, by the way, called Think Unix, which I highly recommend if you can find it on... Uh, think or think? Think. Yeah, T-H-I-N-K, Think Unix. Um, uh, it has a whole section on X that you should just, X windows that you should just completely ignore, but the rest of it is awesome. Because uh, that's the great thing, kind of a digression here, that's the great thing about Linux Unix, is that it doesn't go out of date. I started working in Linux because uh, 15 years ago, because I was sick of Windows, and uh, um, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff I learned back then, I'm still using every, every day. X windows, uh, not one of those things. But uh, uh, that's not really true in, in other environments where, you know, if you become an expert on Windows uh, uh, Server 2008 and you've got to learn 50% of, of what you know all over again for 2012. Um, so, muscle memory. I, uh, I knew from reading that book about Control-R, and I tried it the same way you will after this session, and I was like, oh, that's really cool, the same way you will after this session, and then I never used it the same way you will after this session, and uh, hopefully not. And uh, then, actually, we, use, uh, we used to use uh, uh, Fog Creek Copilot, and it wasn't working, and we had a support uh, session with one of their techs, and he was remoted into our, my computer, and uh, doing a terminal session to, to fix it. And he was control Ring like a mofo, and he was just zipping through it, and it blew my mind actually seeing how effective it could be. So, you know, that, uh, you know, can, you know, control R, you know, it's another one of those, oh, oh like the skies open, remember that. Uh, <laughs> control R is your friend. Okay. Uh, and this is good for if you've been, uh, 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 up arrowing or control Ring all the way through your history and you want to get back to the current command, use shift alt greater than. Shift alt greater than will zip you right back to the current. Um, now, here's a catch. 
If you use a Mac desktop, you'll need to uh, click the checkbox in your terminal preferences for use alt as meta key. Use alt as meta key, which you should probably do anyway because there's no reason not to do it that I'm aware of and lots of reasons to do it. Uh, if you use Linux as your desktop, you're probably recompiling your kernel right now and not listening. So, okay. Um, this is exclamation point, exclamation point, which I will heretofore call bang bang for obvious reasons. Who knows what bang bang does? Who said that? Dude, you get, you get, I gotta start grading on a curve. You're gonna get all the candy. Okay. Where is the, in settings, where is it? Because I'm in it and I can't find it. Um, uh, it is, um, I don't know, and I don't want to interrupt this. Uh, so uh, let's take a look together uh, after, after the session. So uh, bang, bang, repeats the last command. Um, but so does up arrow. So this is useless, right? No. This is useless? No. Okay. Why is it not useless? How many times have you done this? RM slash var slash cache slash foobar denied. You should have typed sudo. What do you do? Sudo bang bang. To uh, yeah, it sounds funny, but I'm, you try saying exclamation point, exclamation point in front of 30 people. Um, uh, so this is awesome. This is a big time saver. This is a big keystroke saver. Hell yeah. Okay, changing directories. Here's one that uh, almost everybody knows. Uh, uh, who, who here doesn't know what the tilde means? Okay, no candy. Uh, CD tilde switches to your home directory. Everybody knows that, Bor you know, boring. If you don't, uh, you know, you just learned something awesome, but everybody knows that. CD dash switches to the last directory you were in. So you can switch back and forth between two directories just by typing cd dash enter, cd dash enter. So you're in slash uh, uh, Etsy, uh, uh, you type uh, you know, cd slash var slash logs, you type cd dash, you're back in slash Etsy. You type cd dash, you're back in var logs. Awesome. So uh, here we're getting to slightly more esoteric uh, commands, but let's see. I know a couple of people here are going to know this. Uh, what do you think I'm thinking of with this? Where am I going? History. Who, sa who's the who said history? No. Oh, that one wasn't my fault. <laughs> history and pipe to grep ssh. So history, the history command gives you all of the, well, not all of the commands, uh, all of the commands you've typed up to the limit of however many it stores, which is something you can set as an environment variable. Then we have the pipe command, which pipes it to another command. We have grep, which searches, and SSH is what we're searching for. So this will give you all of the commands that you have typed that have SSH in them. There's a lot of places that will come in handy. Okay, any questions? Anybody want to go back on anything? Okay. Uh, use aliases for common commands. Who here, uh, since I already told you about it, who here has uh, done a custom alias on their system? <laughs> I, I, you, you, candy is at a discount now. I, I have a lot of candy here. Uh, so uh, the, this should all be on one line, alias LL equals, and then you need the quotes, LS dash FLAH. Okay, we're, we're going fast and I've got a lot of candy. So um, uh, uh, in the LS command, what does the dash F mean? Fancy. <laughs> like with colors and little, little symbols? And the I don't think, I don't think, I don't think it does, sorry, okay? <laughs> I don't think it does colors, but it gives you the symbol at the end of the file name telling you what it is. So if it's a directory, there'll be a slash after it. If it's an executable, it will have a uh, uh, asterisk after it. And most importantly, if it's a symlink, it'll show you what the symlink is to, which is awesome. L. Who, you? 
There we go, blue shirt. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here, let, let, let me give you one for your trouble. There we go, underhand. That, that's, that's the way. A, what does A do? Oh, who said that? What? Oh, man. You can tell I got picked first for baseball. Okay, editing the current command. We're going to go through a bunch of uh, commands, and you don't have to memorize these. You get, you know, you, you can download the presentation. So, uh, uh, you know, unless you want to write all these down. Uh, editing the current command, useful in a control R context where you've gone back in your history, useful in uh, when you've up arrowed and gone back in your history, or useful just, um, you know, if you're editing the line that you're on. Um, one of the best things about these commands that I'm about to show you is that they work in almost every text area in OS X. So you can use these in the command, uh, on the command line, you can use these in a finder window, in Spotlight, uh, in a lot of web pages, I believe, but I'm not 100% certain that they work in Safari and don't work in Chrome. But, uh, so you memorize these, you can use them all over the place. Uh, they work, by the way, also in uh, TextMate and Sublime Text, uh, by default, I believe. Uh, okay, so Backspace is not your friend. This is the other thing that makes me slap people on the back of the head. Don't use Backspace. You, there, 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 are, there are better things to use. Control A to go to the beginning of the line. Here's your mnemonic. A is the first letter. Control A, beginning of the line. So you're, you're editing. Control A, zoop, you're at the beginning. Control E to go to the end of the line. E, end. Control W kills the word before, before the cursor. By kill, I mean delete. Um, control K clears the line after the cursor. So uh, uh, using two of these put together, if you want to delete the line completely, control A to move to the beginning. Control K clears the line. Control U clears the line before the cursor. Even faster, even better, only one keystroke. Uh, you want to clear the line that you're on and, the, the, and you're at the end of it, just hit Control U. Alt F and Alt B move forward and backward one word. And uh, remember, these aren't just command line. You can use these when you're, you know, editing your angry comment about, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Downton Abbey or uh, whatever, you're, wh whatever you're, you're upset about. And by the way, fuck Matthew. Um, nobody has any idea what I'm talking about. Damn it. Okay. This is awesome. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't honestly, I'd say probably. Yeah. But I can tell you it definitely will work if you have it set on meta because I do. Uh, and I don't see any reason not to have, have, have use alt as meta key set. So I would imagine it probably won't, won't work without that. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, if you run Windows, I'm sorry. The, I, I hope you enjoyed the food. Um, <laughs> control, shift, dash, a.k.a. control, underscore, undo. How freaking cool is that? I need to get rid of candy. Who knew about this? No, no, okay, this is not that cool. Um, if you hit enter, you're done. Whatever you just, whatever command you type, no matter how stupid it is, just got executed. Okay, so it doesn't undo that. But say you're editing a long, uh, you're in the middle of a long uh, command string, and you hit control K, and you just deleted the long path that you pasted in there. Uh, control shift dash, you get it back. So, very cool, very cool. Undo on the command line, I know. It's like, what? Uh, and this one's just kind of cool. Control XX to toggle between the current cursor position and the start of the line. So you can just go boop, 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 like that. It doesn't make that noise, though. So these are based on Emacs. If you want, you can use VI key bindings with the command set dash O VI, if you're a, if you're a VI guy. Uh, or gal. Um, you would have to set these in your dot profile or your dot bash RC or you know wherever you set environment variables because that would only last for 
uh, the length of your, of your terminal session, unless you put it in, in one of those profile files. Uh, and you can bring back the correct key bindings with set-o emacs. Uh, be aware that doing set-ovi will not change all that OS X behavior I was talking about. It'll just change what happens on the, on the command line itself. Find is your friend. Find is your friend. There's, uh, I actually have a half-written um, uh, monograph called Find, a Find, comma, a love story. Um, find is awesome. You can do all kinds of things with find. Here's a simple example. Oh, and actually, I guess I do have a lot of friends if you count command line utilities. Um, want to remove all .svn directories from a tree, uh, which is a good thing to do, uh, as long as you're switching to Git. Um, or Mercurial, you know. No? Uh, find period for the current uh, directory, dash type D, um, that's type directory. You could also do dash type F for file. And then dash name. Uh, sorry, this is kind of messed up with the dashes on the ends of the line, but dash name is, there's no space in there. Uh, uh, dash name space uh, uh, dot SVN. And then, so that is, if you just hit enter there before the dash exec, it would just print uh, the paths of all the .svn directories. So that's useful by itself. Uh, but exec, this is, this is an awesome little recipe. Uh, exec executes a command, uh, and the, uh, I'm pointing to my screen because you can see what I'm pointing to. Uh, uh, the curly brackets are replaced with the, um, uh, with the file. So, you know, it, I said if you hit enter before exec, it would print out a list of directories. Uh, it, it'll execute that command, substituting in each of those directories. And then, for reasons that I have never understand, you have to end it with a semicolon, and you have to escape the semicolon, or bash will eat it and find won't get it. So, anybody can tell me why you need the semicolon, other than just because I would appreciate it. Um, yeah, and remove the echo when you get serious. Uh, going back here, this is uh, kind of an incidental uh, lesson, but I always, always, always do this when I'm writing something like this simple as this or much more complicated that could be destructive. I put echo in front of it so that it tells me what it's going to do, and then if I like what it's going to do, you know, it's not removing the wrong files, I, uh, you know, up arrow. Uh, and uh, get rid of the echo and uh, go on from there. Um, know a trick I missed? Send it to me. I'm going to give this presentation again. I'd like to have more cool stuff. Thanks very much. Ooh. Yes, sir. I'll just tell you this. It's, uh, you did the bang bang and uh -huh. you did history. And if you do history and you get the number of the command in uh, order, uh -huh. you can do bang the number of the command that you want to repeat, mm -hmm. and it will then do that. Have you found that to actually save you time? I think I have occasionally. Okay. I don't know if I use it all the time, but uh -huh. I mean... I mean, obviously, you can do some of these things in different ways and yeah. all this, but, yeah. No, all, yeah, all, all of these are, are parts that, you know, that you can put together in, you know, in magnificently different ways. So that was a, a serious question. I have not found that to be useful, and I was wondering if you had, how have you found it to be useful? I mean, I'll just run histories, I'll see what's going on, or uh -huh. I'll grep through the history to uh -huh. find which of the, like, I know uh -huh. I did something, whatever, okay. whatever, and then, oh, it was that one. So, okay, it was 700, bang, 700. Okay. So, you know, so, it, again, you can kind of do the same thing in other ways, but it just, for whatever historical reason, I just have to pick that up along the way mm -hmm. and have used it, so. That's a good trick. Yeah. yeah. Where are the slides available from? The slides are available at scof.org slash, wow, I hope nobody had epilepsy. CLFP. Yes, sir. So perhaps you could uh, help me with this. So I do the same trick that the gentleman over there does where I go through history. Sometimes it, the numbers change slightly. Like something that used to be 498 is now 499. Um, the history log. Uh -huh. And of course, that means that I can't ever rely on remembering a number 
and I have to actually grab and all that other stuff. And I was wondering if you knew why the number changes or if there's a way to make the buffer be like infinite. Uh, there isn't a way to make the buffer infinite until you can get a computer with infinite storage. But there is a uh, environment variable you can set that I don't remember the name of offhand, but we can look it up later, that is just the number of lines that it saves. So you can set it to something very high, like 10,000 or something. Now, the other issue, um, there is an option for uh, uh, remove duplicates. So I'm, I'm guessing here, uh, this, is, this is just the only thing I, uh, I've thought of, that, you know, so the idea there is if you type, you know, uh, echo uh, scope, enter, echo scope, enter, you don't need that twice in your history. So it only records one of them. So it does that or you could tell it to? That is a setting and I don't know how that setting is set on your computer. Sorry, I have a follow-up here, sorry. Um, okay, and so it might be deleting one and that's right. why the renumber, um, that's the only thing I can think of. Is the source command still the same thing to reload the profile? Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, because I'm lazy and often uh, forget the things and often get things wrong, instead of doing source, I will usually just do command N and open a new window because then I know that I'm not missing anything. But, uh, you know. Is the DD only if they're consecutive? Or if, it's, if, it have, if you do it 50 times, it'll just use one spot in the buffer? Uh, the, oh, the deduping? Uh, I believe if you do it 500 times, it only uses one spot in the buffer. But this is based on me reading those docs, you know, a couple of years ago and pulling this out of my butt tonight. So don't quote me on that. So uh, let's say I SSH into some AWS server and I got four <laughs> windows open because I'm doing different things. I enter a command into one of them and mm -hmm. it goes into this history buffer, but it doesn't go in for the rest of them. They like, don't all hit the same button. You're all, you're S you have four windows SSH'd into the same server. Same account. Uh, same server, same account. That you, what you do is, uh, and you'll have to Google this, um, there is a, um, uh, let me, does everybody have the presentation uh, URL? Yeah. I actually did something about that. Uh, basically, uh, and by the way, if anybody knows in uh, Chrome how to get out of presentation mode, <laughs> that would be a useful tip. What? Escape. Yeah, tried that. And F11. F10 or F11. <laughs> 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 I think I might have to get out a shotgun. Uh, Command W will close the tab. There we go. Oh, who said that? By the way, seriously, there's an ass load of candy here, so come by and help yourselves after. Um, and now, uh. By the way, this is something I do. Uh, uh, you can see at the, uh, I just have it echo when it's running because I've had, you know, this doesn't do any harm, it only runs when you open a new window and it has saved me so much pain in troubleshooting this stuff to make sure that these scripts are actually running and in what order they're running and you know what's calling what. So that can be very useful. Um, what's the difference in batch profile and profile? Um, excellent question. Now, does anyone else have any questions? Uh, uh, <laughs> There, there are, you know, Unix, which OS X and Linux are basically copies of, and we could get into a very pedantic discussion about that, and please don't, um, uh, is not really a product that was designed. It was a product that grew over time. Like, we have, uh, you know, as an example, we have files in... Uh, uh, slash USR, slash bin, slash bin. One of the reasons for that is that they were keeping programs in slash bin on the original, you know, Vax, whatever, that they were writing Unix on, and they ran out of room. So they uh, added another hard drive and called that slash USR slash bin. And we have these files in these places uh, forevermore because of, because they ran out of hard drive space, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, uh, whenever they were uh, inventing uh, Unix. So it grew, it accreted, it's organic, and that is exactly what happened with the dot profile 
uh, bash rc bash underscore profile these are often um, you know these are they're all documented you can google and find it they run in a particular order they have a particular precedence on uh, uh, OS 10 pretty much everything is done in dot profile in Linux pretty much everything is done in dot bash RC um, uh, but I'm certain that you could find counter examples and people customize their own so just because um, Ooh. Okay. So, I wanted to answer your history merge question. Uh, okay, the guy who had the history size question. Um, uh, he, the environment variable is hist size. Uh, I don't remember what uh, histepend does, but um, someone should look that up. Uh, and uh, take a look at this line. There's no perfect way of doing it, but if you do prompt command uh, equals history a for append, semicolon, prompt command, and I believe when I was really interested in making this work for the same reason that, that you were doing it, um, I did uh, uh, another semicolon history dash a after it and it sort of half-assed worked but um, never really flawlessly and that's why I have the vestige of it uh, in here but play around with that you might be able to get something uh, something going any other yes sir it's one of the things that I, I learned from actually my boss at this place years ago is in the same way that we're analogous to a barrel bringing back commands from the previous commands. <laughs> I think it's uh, alt period, my fingers aren't telling me now, that bring back the arguments from previous commands. What? Yeah. Yeah. Alt. And you can just keep alt perioding and it'll just keep scrolling back. The only thing is I don't know how to scroll forward if you scroll too far. But um, there may be a way of doing that. Alt too. period. Holy shit. And then how do you go back? You just do it again? Back, well, you keep going. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want to go forward, the problem is I don't know how to go forward. So if you just go too far, you know, and you've done it like 10 times, so like, do you hold shift as it go back? Because that's what it is for, like, control R. No. Yeah. You got to hold shift here, maybe? No, I just tried it. It beeped. But that's awesome. It's, it totally is. Okay, I need, I, hold on, I need to write that down. Oh, no, this is being recorded, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool, very cool. Um... How do you use that? Because I could see that going into the bucket of really cool, but I never use it. No, no. This, like, I, I'm trying to think of, of some time where I might have used it, but... Um, uh, it's sublime. I think you're using sublime, isn't it? Uh, okay. uh, Let's say, I don't know, you, yeah. you LS for something, but and, you, and yeah. uh, pattern, you find it, then you... You know, oh, and then you uh, RM... Uh, yeah, like uh, that. So you can just do the command all period. And, period and, and, yeah. Dude. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, I, can't, I can't tell you exactly, but it has definitely. Oh, man. Not here. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I'm willing to share. <laughs> yeah. uh, other questions? Going once, going twice. Thank you very much. Thank you to Q. Thank you to um, Co-Loft. Please tell me I got that right. Uh, thank you very much for coming, guys. Thank you. And thank you to the PhD users.